Hey, what's up guys? This is actually a pretty fun question that we're doing here today. This does take a little bit more time than the other questions we've been doing, so I'm just gonna dive right in. Uh, part of the track of an amusement park roller coaster is shaped as shown above. A safety bar is oriented lengthwise along the top of each car. In one roller coaster car, a small 0.1 kilogram ball is suspended from this bar by a short length of light and extensible spring. Spring. No, string. Initially, the car is at rest at point A. On the diagram to the right, draw and label all the forces acting on the 0.1 kilogram ball. They really didn't photocopy this properly, but oh well. All the power to them. We have gravity. FG. And the ball's not moving, right? It's in equilibrium, which means you gotta have a T. Right here. So your T is counteracting your FG. So basically that solves question two for us already. Calculate the tension in the spring. Spring why do I keep saying spring? It's string. Okay. So your tension equals mass times gravity, right? So honestly, it depends on what constant you use for gravity, as long as you stick with that constant throughout the whole question. I'm just using uh 9.81, but for speed's sake, we can use the 10 meters per second. And that will give us a tension of 1 newton. Lovely. The car is then accelerated horizontally, goes up a 30 degree incline, goes down a 30 degree incline, and then goes around a vertical circular loop of radius 25 meters. For each of the four situations described in parts B to E, do all three of the following. We gotta determine the horizontal component TH, we gotta determine the vertical component TV, and we gotta show on the adjacent diagram the approximate direction of the spring with respect to the vertical. Okay. Shouldn't be that hard, right? Let's take a look. First scenario. The car is at point B, moving horizontally to the right with an acceleration of 5.0 meters per second squared. Keep in mind here we have an acceleration, which means there is a force acting on the uh, car, not the string. So, Newton's law of inertia, right? Our ball and string should actually be in that position, somewhere like that. Uh, if you don't understand, I highly recommend you go onto YouTube and watch some videos about Newton's law of inertia and figure it out for yourself. Here, if we were to draw a free body diagram, if this is our ball, we would have FG. We would have T, V, the vertical component. We would have here our tension, this tension right here. And then we would have T horizontal. Well, we know that T horizontal has a value because there's no vertical, it's not aligned with the vertical component. So what would it be? Well, here, our vertical component is the same as our force of gravity, okay? This is true because we are not going on any incline right now. So our TV equals mg equals whatever you stated up here. So for us, that's one newton. How about th then? Well, we know that th, honestly, it's like the only force that will be acting on the ball now, the net force, because our vertical tension, vertical component of the tension, and gravity uh, both cancel out each other, right? So, TH equals MA, which for us turns out to be 0 0.5 newtons. Fantastic. Scenario number two. The car is at point C and is being pulled up the 30 degree incline with a constant speed of 30 meters per second. It says constant, right? So our ball should be like this. Because you don't have an acceleration, okay? The ball and the string can just stay in the same point that it is here. It's free to rotate about that axis, right? So that's how we would do that. And because it's in line with the vertical axis, your tension horizontal is zero, 
and potential vertical is the same as up here, right? So this would be 1 Newton. It's a constant speed. This is why we're not worried about like the angle here. In this scenario, however, the car is at point D moving down the 30 degree incline with an acceleration of 5 meters per second. We got an acceleration here. This, we need to do some vector addition, which is lovely and not at the same time. So first, we know if this is our ball, it should go like this. Law of inertia, again. We have a tension. We have a force of gravity. Horizontal component of tension. And the vertical component of tension. However, the vertical here does not equal the, the uh, gravity. First, got to find what the actual tension is. And we do that by using this lovely diagram right here. Tension, force of gravity. This right here would be our angle theta. All right, and so now we know that T equals Fg, Mg, Mg cosine 30. Okay, so that in, I'm just going to throw that into my calculator real quick. We get, oh, actually, I'm, hold on. Yeah, we get a lovely... 0 0.85 ish number. Let me try that again. 0 0.1. Oh my god. Whatever cosine 30 is, my calculator is like dying right now. Hold on. Yeah, 0 0.86, 0 0.87, around that range, okay? So for us, t equals 0 0.86. Da 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 da. And now, again, we can do vector addition. T, TV, TH. Here's our angle. And you're like, hold up. But from here, we can see that like TV and FG should be like the same, right? No, 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 no. This is not a right triangle. Here you could have an imaginary right triangle, but what if TV's here, right? So always pay attention to that. Don't just base everything off of diagrams. We know our value for T. We know our, our angle value, right? So then we know these two values. TV should equal T cosine theta. And TH should equal T sine theta. Right? So then, in the end, you should have, and this time I actually got my calculator ready, haha, <laughs> th should be around 0 0.43 newtons, and ty should be around 0 0.75 newtons. Fantastic. Okay. That was that. This part here. The car is at point E, moving upside down with an instantaneous speed of 25 meters per second and no tangential acceleration at the top of the vertical loop, radius 25 meters. Okay, so we got a bit of centripetal uh, forces going on here. But first, we draw. You would think, hey, what if the car's at here, the spring can't hold the ball up, right? So shouldn't the mass be here? No, because we're still going at a speed. So it should be still aligned with the vertical, your mass there. Why is that? Again, it's the same concept. If you take a take a string, uh, loop loop something around it, whip it around like you're a cowboy, at the maximum height, the mass doesn't just come down, right? You got your speed, you got like energies and momentums and everything keeping it up. Same concept here. Okay, cool. So we have that. Again, 
there's no horizontal component, right? It's aligned with the vertical. This makes life easier. You already answered part of the question. Now, our centripetal force, Fc, equals mv squared over r. That should be equal to, watch, here's our ball. Here's our force of gravity. Here's our tension. Whoa, so this will be equal to, oh my god, mg plus t. And we know that mg, what mg is, right? So t, and this would be the whole t, this would be tv, equals mm, mg negative mg plus fc. Okay. Throw that into your calculator. Bada bing, bada boom. And you get a tension of around 1.5 newtons. Okay? Awesome. And that is the question here. This with me blabbering took around 11 minutes but this again I did the calculations beforehand so this should take you maximum 15 minutes I would say again that's pretty good for a qualitative quantitative translation question because you're only supposed to do a max 25 minutes for that so again once you're done take a break right because on the test they don't let you skip directly to the next question so if you're done before the timer's up, you're pretty darn sure what you have is right, and you've checked over your work, go grab yourself like a bowl of ice cream or something and just chill. Uh, don't stress out about this test. Honestly, it shouldn't be that bad. Okay, good luck everyone. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, again, contact information, throw it up there. And yeah, awesome, see you guys next time.